In this video, we're going to go through a slightly more involved example of using conditional statements and programming the Arduino. So we're going to use this potentiometer here and we're going to detect its state and based on like what value it's giving us when we're reading it into an analog input, we're going to turn on specific colors of this RGB LED. So let's start by constructing the circuit. So I'm going to start by placing my um, potentiometer up here. And this one, there's several different versions of it, but this one has three pins kind of arranged vertically here. And so the top pin, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect that to my, let me make sure I'm doing it in the right place. There it is, that's on three. So I'm gonna connect that to my five volts. And then the middle pin, I will connect to my A0, my analog pin, and then this one I'm going to connect to ground there so that as I'm turning this dial this will have some proportion of this 5 volt uh, going to here so when it's turned all the way to um, one way it'll be 0 volts and when it's turned all the way to another direction it will be 5 volts so that's how this is this circuit is set up here and then we'll be able to read that using analog read where instead of a value between 0 and 5 volts it's going to give us something between 0 and 1023 where 1023 will correspond to our maximum 5 voltage and we can do like a little unit conversion there if we want um, then let's wire up this RGB LED so remember the longest leg is our ground and then the one to the left of it is going to be red and then the two to the right will be green followed by blue. So I'm gonna to try to plug each of these into a different row, which can sometimes be a little bit of a pain. There we go. Okay, so then we'll go down in order. So I need a resistor for the red. I'm gonna skip over the one that goes to ground. Then I need a resistor for my green and a resistor for my blue. And then what I can do is I'll connect my ground connection here. So this will go from that row to here. And then I can just connect each of these kind of in order if I want. I'll go red, that'll go to pin two. I will do my green, that'll go to pin three. And then I'll do my blue and that'll go to pin four. So now that that's all set up here, it's time to take a look at our code. So let's pull this up and I think I have a blank sketch open. Perfect. So let's go through and define these. And so this defining of pins is gonna be really helpful because now we have like four different things connected up here. So I'm gonna start here by just calling this one like dial. It's a potentiometer, but it's slightly shorter and I'm just gonna turn that dial and we'll check its value there. And so that's connected to pin A0. Then I will say LED R and that is on two. Then let's see LED green and that is three. And then LED B and that is four. And so now what I need to do is I need to uh, configure the pins, um, but let's also uh, set up the serial port just in case that's helpful to have. So to do that, I will say serial dot begin 9600 and then here what I'll do is I'll say let's do our pin mode and we'll start with LED R because remember our analog inputs are by default analog inputs so we don't have to use pin mode for them we're going to use it for our three uh, digital outputs here so I will say their name and then I will say output and then I'm gonna copy and paste this line, work smarter, not harder, and change that to G, and change that to B. So now that should all be set up. Um, let's just start by trying to read the value that we're getting from our uh, dial here, or our potentiometer. So I'm gonna store this to an integer value, and I'll just call it like reading, since we're just kind of reading that, and we're gonna say analog read, and then I tell it the pin number, and so I called this pin dial. And let's just print it out and make sure that the values we're getting make sense and that we wired everything up correctly. Um, and so I'm gonna upload this, and I'll go to this view, there we go. 
and it says done uploading, bring up the serial monitor, I'll kind of expand this. So we're getting some values, and as I turn it this way, they go all the way up to 1023, and as I turn it the other way, they go all the way down to zero. So that's working right. So now what we wanna do is change the colors of our LED as we are turning this dial. So that's gonna happen inside a loop because this is running over and over again. And as we take a reading here, what we can do is check its value um, and do some comparison in the conditional, uh, in the condition for an if statement. And based on that, we'll, we'll turn on different colors here. So let's make like low values like red and then maybe we can go up to like blue or something like that. Um, that makes sense to me. So what we'll do is we'll say if reading, and remember this is like between zero and 1023. So let's see, like a quarter of the way would be like around 255. So let's say if reading is less than 255, then we will do this. We'll say let's turn on the red light. So that would be digital right LED are high like this and then if we just want the red one on we're not sure what other colors were on in whatever the previous state of this was right maybe it was coming from like our green or our blue state or something like that what we'll do is we'll just turn those off so that we know that it's only going to be the red one showing so I'll say LED G should be low meaning off and LED B should be low meaning off so if this condition is true, it should do that. All right, so let's start it at something above that, all right, and just check our, our code here for our sanity. Oh, and I've already messed something up. What did I mess up? So LED, oh, there's no underscores up here. So let me get rid of those. That should just be like that. Okay, so now let me run it. And, We'll go to the serial monitor. So we're getting values of like 400. And so as I turn it down, oh, I should move my hand out of the way, but it went red. And then as I turn it back up, it's still red because we set it high here and we don't do anything else. So let's write some of our other states here. So let's do something if the value is between uh, maybe like 255 and 512 would be like the next range there. So let's do that. So we'll say, um, we'll do this as an else if, or let's actually, let's start it with an if, and I want to show something here. So we can say if the reading is greater than or equal to 255, because here we're doing less than, so we'll do greater than or equal to 255, and reading is less than 512 like this then what we'll do is we have the red on here um, let's go purple here so I'm gonna copy and paste this here and we'll make this indention right so purple would be the red on and the blue on there okay so this will be our red state, this is our purple state. And then let's do maybe like a, or not teal, but like cyan state. And then we'll do a blue state. And so I'm gonna do these all as if statements just to showcase one thing, and then we will kind of talk about why they could maybe be else ifs instead. So for cyan, let's make it if it's greater than or equal to 512 or less than or equal to, what is the math here? I can't even do it off the top of my head. So if the reading is greater than or equal to 512 and the reading is less than or equal to, and look, we, we don't even have to do the math. Maybe this will be a good example. We'll just say 512 plus 255, right? and then I'll add my curly braces there. And then I'm gonna copy and paste this again inside of here. And for cyan, we want red to be off. And then we want green and blue to be on. Perfect. And then 
this last state is going to just be blue and so that's going to be between this value here and um, 1023 which is the max right so I could just say if the reading here is greater than or equal to and I guess that we could just we could just do the math right that's seven six seven yeah that makes sense um, and we'll say here we just want it to be blue so I'm gonna copy and paste all this again and this will be low low and then high all right, and I don't have to do less than or equal to 10,023 because that's the upper bounds of it, right? So here I can just say if it's less than this value, and then here I'll do if it's between this bound and this bound, and here I'll do if it's between this bound and that bound, and then here I'll just do if it's above that one. All right, so let's run this and see if it works the way we expect. Okay, so I know it washes it out a little bit, but let's see, we're at 512, and that's, so that's our blue. I can see it better on my end. Then it goes to our cyan. So you can see there's a little bit of green in there. I don't know how to make this not wash out as much on the camera, but there's our purple, and there's our red. So it's, it's toggling through all of our states, and it's, it's working correctly. But we just used if statements here. And because we used if statements, it in some ways complicated things. I had to do these compound statements with a logical and operator to make sure that I was saying if the value is greater than or equal to this and it was less than this value. But let's kind of like showcase why an else is helpful in a lot of cases. Because what an else does is it chains it up and is makes it contingent on the previous condition here. So I could just say, if the reading is less than 255, else if the reading is less than 512. Because if the reading is less than 255, it's gonna enter this if statement, and then it's gonna skip over this one. So it, it, even though the reading is less than 512, it won't matter because I made this an else statement, right? And so the else chains it up to here where this will only happen if this didn't happen. And so I could change all of these like this, right? I could make this one like this and say else, let's replace this value. I was too lazy to do the math. I don't, it's embarrassing. All right, so then this is an else if. And then for this last one here, we can just change this to an else, right? Because that's the only other state here. So even though some value, like a value of 200 would be true for this one and true for this one and true for this one, because it's true for this one and these are else's, it will skip over those. And so this should perform in exactly the same way. This is just kind of highlighting why else ifs are helpful and like cases in which they might be, right? And so we'll, we'll see some more examples like this in the future, um, but you'll just kind of want to think about what is it you're trying to compare, right? Do you just want it to do one of these possible things or do you want it to be able to do multiples of those things, right? So if you only wanted to do one action, that's a good indicator that you should probably have else's in there. If you want it to be able to do, like if I had two lights here and I wanted to change them to be different colors based on that, those wouldn't be else ifs, those would be separate statements. But here, just to kind of showcase that it works the way that we think, red, purple, cyan, blue, and then cyan, purple, red. And there we go. So this is our, our program here using else if statements.